Welcome to Split Second! If you want to buy the best sleeves or other magic-related accessories, head down to Dragon Shield using the affiliate link below. A quick reminder that next week Tier 1 Con Greatest CDH Tournament will take place in Copenhagen, Denmark, and some of us will be attending, so if you are also participating or nearby, come hang with us and play some games. This week, Bob brought his take on Tivit Seller of Secrets. Rodrigo is once again on his Catilda Emil combo deck. Late found some time to play some games with us, bringing his Arnia deck. And David is trying out a spicy list for Johnny Renicus Shattered One. Bald is going first and he kept his first 7, with an exotic orchard, city of brass, unburied ruin, which can help in retrieving time sieve in case it gets countered or destroyed. Chain of vapor for interaction and Limdol's vault can help him find a time sieve. Mana drain for protection and Gilladrake can steal some pesky creatures if needed. Rodrigo also kept his first 7, with a lucky gemstone caverns and a forest, which is enough to help him cast Catilda turn 1 for ramp, or that sylvan library to help him dig for some more juice. Serith the Viper's Fang serves as protection for his combo lines, Drum Bellower is a semi seed born, and Captain Cize can help him find the needed combo pieces like Emil, as well as that finale of Devastation. Here's Lates' hand with all those random menace cards. He mulligan once, keeping a single City of Brass for lands, but with an Imperial Seal that can help him find Jeweled Lotus or other ramp to get Anya going, in order to filter Gibbering Descent, Archchain of Spite, and Alchemist's Greeting. Unmarked Grave can find World Guard of Dragon, and Tainted Pack can help find Animate Dead or similar enchantments to win. David Mulligan once and found a Morphic Pool and Exotic Orchard for lands. Until Misstep for interaction, Mystic Reflection can also help slow down his opponents, denying their creatures and copying the bad one he already gave someone. Imposter Mech awaits late stock side to be cast, or some Gilda Drake, while Demonic Tutor can help him pivot his game plan. This CDH staple Ebon Blade Reaper is one of the set creatures that he plans to give his opponents. Ready for the match? Before the game starts, Rodrigo announces his luck with the Gemstone Caverns, exiling his Captain Cizay. Bal begins his turn and draws a Lotus Petal, which he casts right away. He plays a City of Brass and passes. Rodrigo plays a Forest and slams his Catilda Dawnheart Prime, passing too late. He plays a City of Brass and casts an Imperial Seal, searching for a Jewel Lotus and passes. David plays a Morphic Pool and casts a nicely top decked Jewel Lotus. He doesn't have much ramp to cast more creatures, but does cast his commander, John Irenicus, Shattered One, ending his turn. In the end step, though, Bal casts a Limdol's Vault. He goes quite deep in order to find his time sieve, attempting to get a fast win, paying a total of 15 life. Not only did he find sieve, but a jewel lotus as well, which will come in handy. He gets to his turn, plays an exotic orchard and casts a jewel lotus, passing afterwards. Rodrigo draws and casts a sylvan safekeeper, he then casts a sylvan library and passes. Late goes to his turn, draws and casts a jewel lotus, which he cracks to cast Anya Falconrath. He activates it right away, discarding menace cards, which allows him to draw a card and a tapper again every time. He doesn't find any lands, so he even discards an abrade, stopping the chain there. He casts a chromox and imprints an unmarked grave, hinting at having an entomb at hand. David gets to his turn, plays an Earth Saga, entering and gaining his first ability. He then casts a demonic tutor and searches for a fierce guardianship to have Ball in check, as the table truly believes he has the time sieve in hand already. He then attacks Rodrigo for two, since he has Sylvan Library and passes. Bal gets to his turn, plays a Buried Ruin and casts his commander, TV Seller of Secrets. It enters play and everyone votes. Bal votes twice for bribery, creating two treasures while his opponents vote for evidence, so he creates three clues and ends his turn. Rodrigue draws, paying four life for an extra card from his library trigger. He plays a Plains and ponders on the best stacks piece to slow the current board. He then casts a Village Bell Ringer, entering and attacking his two humans, which are dogs as well. Then he casts a Finale of Devastation, X equals 2, which hints at a Collector Oof, so late responds by casting his Entomb while he can. However, David says no, with a mental misstep. Paul then responds with his Mana Drain, and Rodrigo asks if David has something, and he does, his Fierce Guardianship, so Finale resolves and Rodrigo searches for a Collector Oof to play. We are back to Leite, who is playing 25 lands in his deck, and is now activating Anya, desperately trying to find a way out, even discarding a Necromancy. He finds nothing and sadly passes. David draws and his Earth Saga against its second ability. He plays an exotic orchard and attacks late with his commander. He was hoping to find more creatures, but still casts Ebon Blade Reaper. Everyone approaches to read it and they double check its oracle text. As they expected, it was erected to a human, so giving it to Rodrigo is a no go. This way, he gives it to Bal with his commander, which, in case Bal finds removal for Oof, he could also die in the extra turn from Time Sieve. Bal gets to his turn and jumps to combat, attacking Rodrigo with Tivit and Ebonblade towards later. Ebonblade triggers and he loses half his life from a dub. Then Tivit also triggers and he gets two treasures and three clues. 
David also draws from his Commander's Trigger, and in the second main phase he casts a Gilded Drake. It enters and it targets Collector Oof, which Rodrigo finds strange, but still sacrifices a land with Sylvan Safekeeper to give it Shroud. But in response, Bal casts a Chain of Vapor, targeting his own Gilded Drake to be returned to his hand. He sacrifices a land to copy the chain and targets the Oof, so Rodrigo is forced to sacrifice another land with his Safekeeper, giving its Shroud to the Oof. He then passes, and Rodrigo draws one extra card from the library, paying 4 life more. He is still added in control, as he casts a Yasharn in Placable Earth. Just in case Oof leaves, there is now even more stacks. He gets a basic Plains and Forest, and still attacks Bal for 2. Later he gets to his turn, and still no lands on the horizon, so he activates Anya discarding Kitchen Imp and actually casting it, hoping to have some blockers. He draws and asks if Bal is planning on attacking him anymore, but Bal tells him he's after Rodrigo as long as those two stacks pieces are in play. This way, Late also attacks Rodrigo for 2 in the air and passes. David draws and his Earth Saga gains its final ability and he floats 1 mana in response. He searches for a useless Soul Ring and proceeds to combat, sending his commanders towards Late, being forced to pass as he's also failing those land drops. Bal draws and plays a March Flash, which he can't even crack to shuffle the card on top, which he knows from the Limdol's Vault. He recasts his Gilded Drake, entering and he targets Catilda to try to set Rodrigo behind another land, as he floats white and sacrifices his planes to the Safekeeper to give Shroud to Catilda. He then attacks Rodrigo with Ebon Blade, triggering Johnny Renicus for David to draw a card, and itself for Bal to lose all of his life rounded up. Rodrigo blocks with a Sharn and Bal passes. Rodrigo untaps and draws only one card from the library. He plays a forest and casts Serith's Viper Fang, for even more protection to his creatures, as he is slowly setting up to combo. He still casts a Weathered Wayfarer, but since Viper Fang can untap a land and Wayfarer could search for a Cradle, David responds with a Mystic Reflection, for it to enter as a copy of Kitchen Imp. With this, he just passes. Lady gets to his turn and still no lands. I mean, what would you expect from a deck with 25 lands? He activates Anya, discarding Blazing Rootwalla and casting it for free. He draws and still no lands, so he starts dumping some more Madness cards until he discards World Gorgeous Dragon. He has Animate Dead at hand, but the drawn card is… a Verdant Catacombs that he can't even crack, so he just passes pretty sad about it. David found a land, a Gemstone Caverns. He then casts a Dothy Void Walker, which can stop Blade's combo in case he finds another land. He still casts a Mana Vault, and then goes into his end step, triggering his commander and giving Dothy to Bal, hoping he does some more damage to Rodrigo before he takes the game. Bal draws and goes straight to combat, attacking Rodrigo for 5 and leaving Tivit behind to block once again. Johnny Rinicus triggers and David draws a card, and Bal passes. Rodrigo untaps and draws only one from his library trigger. He goes into combat and sends enough damage towards Bal that he simply accepts his demise and doesn't block. He dies and Dothy returns to David's control, which still keeps late in check. Rodrigo then casts a Drum Bellower, not quite a Seedborn, but still close with all his human dorks. He still casts a Hopeful Initiate before passing. Late gets to his turn and activates Anya. The cards are discarded to exile where he can cast them, by their madness cost, and when he wants, they are then exiled to Dothy. He finally found a mountain, but it arrived a turn too late. He passes and on his end step, Rodrigo joins the Mitra Club as he activates Catilda to put a plus one plus one counter on all his creatures. He does this with Hopeful Initiate, who was still summoning Sick, but this thankfully doesn't change anything of the outcome of the game, as you will soon see. David gets to his turn, and being a bit tight in mana, he attacks Rodrigo for 5. He then casts a Drinker of Sorrow for a lack of mana and goes to his end step, triggering his commander and giving it to late, in hopes they can still pressure Rodrigo somehow. In the end step still, Rodrigo casts an Aladdin's Call and searches for an Emil to his hand. He gets to his turn, and once again being conservative on his library trigger, keeping only one card. He casts a Emil the Blast, and it resolves, so he activates it targeting Village Bell Ringer. In response, though, Lady casts a Tented Pact. He's going quite deep, hoping to find the Flecking Sword, and meanwhile losing access to most of his win cons. He eventually finds it and casts it, changing the Emil target from Bellringer to Sarith. This gained Leighton David one turn, let's see how it will pan out. Rodrigo still attacks David with his flyers and late with the Asharn, and he jump blocks with the Rootwalla, before ending his turn. However, as Leighton taps, it's somehow still Rodrigo's turn, as he activates Emil targeting the Bellringer, still in the upkeep. In response, Leighton activates Anya, discarding a Rite of Flame, but it eventually resolves. Bellringer is blinked and tapping his creatures, and since the coast seems clear, Rodrigo now proposes a loop, where he activates Emil targeting the Bellringer again, but this time floating mana with his other human darks, generating infinite mana. With the infinite mana, he now activates Catilda infinitely, to put a quadrillion plus one plus one counters on his creatures and pass his priority. Lady draws and casts a mana crypt. 
He follows it with a Doxide Exogenist to have a blocker, but in response to its ETB, Rodrigo redoes the loop to generate infinite mana, and then uses that mana and hopefully initiate to remove a couple of counters from the quadrillion he had and destroys all artifacts from Leite and David, so Doxide enters and creates only one useless treasure, which Rodrigo still destroys as Leite attempts to go to combat. His Drinker of Sorrow is goaded and must attack Rodrigo, triggering Jorin and David draws a card. Rodrigo blocks with one of his huge creatures. They are so desperate about the boar state that they even forget its trigger ability and later passes. David gets to his turn and goes to combat, sending Dothy towards Rodrigo one last time, but the damage was not enough. He still casts Ebon Drake and goes to his Ensep, triggering his commander giving the Drake to Rodrigo, just in case he decides to storm off, right? Before getting to his turn, Rodrigo repeats his Emil plus Bellringer combo, so that his Ebon Drake also has a quadrillion plus one plus one counters. Rodrigo gets to his turn, draws a single card from the library and turns his creature sideways for victory. GG! Thank you for joining us for today's match everyone! We have another game from this recording, but we will have to postpone its publishing due to the upcoming tier 1 event, so stay tuned! This game was heavily affected by how deep Bal went with his Lindel's Vault, so that everyone knew what his plans were. Collector Oof slowed down the combo players at the table, and Yasharn was also devastating for Leite's late to fetch land. Dothy was the final nail in the coffin for Leite. He still tried to stop Rodrigo with that desperate reflecting swat, but it was not enough, as most of Rodrigo's lines were creature based. We'd like to start the credits by thanking our current patrons, and especially Izanagi, TJ Rap, Mike Purr, Ajimo, Drunken House Cat, V, RJ, Hita Chill. Pina, Ricardo, Dragonsteak, Katerina, Michael Bowen, Super Scaldi, Dog, Wyatt, Wicked and Xenon, our stack breakers. If you want to support us, you can do so by liking this video, subscribing or by becoming a patron yourself. If you want to go through other Commander adventures, click one of the videos on the right. If you want to talk with us about our games or other EDH related matters, join us on Discord. Join us again next week for a new set of Commanders and more decisive plays. See you all then!